Salem, and welcome back to the second episode. Filmed at Salem High School, which contains our second studio. Second episode, second studio, it's the whole thing. Now for the good part, announcements. First, all current announcements can be found on the Google Classroom SHS 411. To join, just go in and type the class code 2RKYYT. In September through October, there will be numerous college fairs that you can go to if you're planning on going to a college or even the military. There will be one September 20th, 26th, and the 27th, then October 1st, 3rd, and the 10th. Stay posted for more information regarding that. And for those of you wondering, no, there are not clowns or fire eaters at these fairs. I found out the hard way. Also, remember that the deadline to purchase insurance on your Chromebook is August 27th. Plus, it's only $20. It's less than the price of a 40 Bell Bell cheese wheels. Now let's head over to Ethan Bauer, our local weatherman and owner of the world's first sea monkey ranch. Thanks, Abby. I bet you regret letting me write your lines. On Saturday, there'll be scattered thunderstorms, and then later in the day, it'll be mostly sunny skies with temperatures in the 60s to 80s, with a 50% chance of rain. On Sunday, it'll be roughly the same, with only a 40% chance of rain. So, sports is next, but before that, I'd like to point out that I know what foot bail is now. No, foot bail. You know, the one with the black and white ball that you kick into the stringy thing and then the Brazilians get all happy? You can stop shaking your heads, I know I'm right. You sports. Thanks, Ethan, and it's football. You know, brown, white ball shaped like an eye. You'll get it one of these days. But since we're talking about football, let's move on to the boys of fall. The hometown Lions fought hard but fell short against the visiting North Harrison Cougars with a final score of 17 to 27. I had a chance to sit down with co head coach Hartsfield of the football team about last Friday's game and the upcoming game against the Silver Creek Dragons this Friday. All right, how does your team feel going into the second game after the season opener with North Harrison? Well, you, you know, they feel well. I mean, they, there's, there's no, um, you know, the, the first game shouldn't affect your second game. Um, you know, the biggest part of it is just that, that our kids got to understand that, that we got to go to work and we got to get better in every, every practice that we have. And, you know, obviously North Harrison's a good team, and so is Silver Creek, so we're excited about our challenge. Yeah, that reminds me. Uh, are there any weaknesses you saw Friday against North Harrison that your team really especially needs to work on? Yeah, I mean, we just we can't beat ourselves. I mean, you look we, in that game against North Harrison, you, you, we lost uh, – you know, we, we threw a pick, and then we um, had a fumble. Um, and then on the defensive side, we played pretty well, except for four plays that, that cost us 200 yards so, and, and four scores. So, you know, stuff like that, you got to clean up. And, and you know, the, the um, weaknesses obviously just become things that you got to fix every week. Yeah. And uh, based on your history with Silver Creek, does that give you any indication as to how the game might play out? They're a lot different team this year than they than they've been, um, and, and so are we. Uh, you know, so so I don't think that any year you can look at history wise and see if they're going to be be okay in, in the game or not. I think you just got to go out and perform and um, you know give everything you've got and see what happens. So um, obviously they're a good team. Um, you know they, they fit a, they fit our personnel pretty well, and so um, it, it'll be a battle. And um, we just got to got to keep working every day. So what you're saying is don't expect anything. Yeah, you can, I mean you can't expect anything. You, you can't expect that that anybody's going to. You know, do something that um, that is is or is not a a um, success. You gotta you gotta understand that you know each day that you that you go out there, you, it's a different day, and anything can happen. And um, kids gotta play hard, and if they don't play hard and they don't play smart, you know it's gonna be a long night. Because Silver Creek's a pretty solid squad. Based on what you've seen with Silver Creek this year, is there are there any like strengths or strong points they have that yeah. you're worried about? I mean, their defensive line is pretty good. Um, they bring back three guys from last year. That was a really good defensive unit. Um, you know, they they have some new guys in some 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 areas that we want to be able to take advantage of. And um, you know, obviously, we we've, we've just got to focus on ourselves more than we got to focus on them. So, um, biggest biggest coaching point this week has just been do what we need to do to fix us and, and not worry so much about Silver Creek. All right. So, what is your team doing to get ready against the game? Uh, you know, I mean, just working on. The working on the basics, fundamentals, things that we that we struggled with on Friday, and things that we need know that we need to improve. And, and you know, it's it those they're all things that um, can be fixed, which is good. And you know, this this week's just one of those weeks where you've got to strap your chin strap up and bite down on your mouthpiece because it's going to be a it's going to be a heck of a game, I'm sure. 
so like right now would you say your team is ready to face the creek or? yeah we've got i mean we've got one more uh one more work day and then we've got another pregame day so you know we still have a lot of work to do uh you know you, you've got a whole week to pre prepare for them and that's what that's what you've got to do i think i think with that said that's that's where we stand right now all right. Thanks for talking with us today. Absolutely. Thanks, man. We'll be sure to root you guys on tonight. We appreciate it. Go Lions. Thanks. Again, thanks to Coach Harsville for sitting down with me for the interview. Really great guide and great motivator. Our volleyball team took a couple of losses last week against the Silver Creek and Madison. However, they are the 2018 Washington County Tourney Champions. The Lady Lions wins match one, 25-18 and 26-24 against West Washington and the match two against Eastern 25-19 and 25-13. The volleyball team has continued its winning ways by pounding the Eagles of Austin 25-14, 25-10 and 25-16. This tennis team split a couple of matches last week beating South Central 3-2 but falling to Paoli 2-3. Number one single Suvac defeated Long of Paoli 6-0 and 6-1 and number two doubles Team Fleming and Minton defeated Stroud and Yalder of Paoli 1-6, 6-4, and 6-3. Against South Central, the Salem Lions 1-1 fought hard, fought hard and got a much-earned victory against the South Central Rebels. The Rebels had an age advantage, though, which was most evident as the one doubles position. However, the Lions did not back down on any of those courts and were able to win on three of them. Landon Suvac continued his early success, and fellow senior Evan Shelby had a strong showing by having a better second set than his first. Gavin Fleming and Aiden Minton lost momentum in the second set, but was able to regroup. Thanks, Coach Souter, for details. And as soccer news, you know, Ethan, the one that the Brazilians love, like you were talking about, uh, the Lady Lions soccer team lost against Jennings County 7-1 uh, to one on Saturday. Uh, Backhurns would scored the Lady Lions gold. However, they re they did rebound Monday night by defeating Christian Academy six to two. Miller scored three of the Lady Lion goals. Brown with two and Backhurns with one. Great game, ladies. If you would like to hear more about your favorite teams, just tell your coach to email Mr. Wade Swift your results, and we will talk about them on the Salem Show each week. Remember to go to SalemAthletics.com for all the up-to-date information about Salem sports. We love all our sports teams, and yes, that includes our secret underground air hockey team. What? Oh, we're not supposed we're not supposed to mention that. Ah, it's okay. I'll just get them to cut it out. And now let's turn over to our main story about an issue all of us can relate to: bullying. With the trends and cliques of high school, many people are teased, left out, or bullied in a way. Our window to the outside world, Jamari, will explore what bullying is and how to help it with this interview. starts with you. Find out more at charactersunite.com. What are the different types of bullying? Well, there are different types of bullying. It can be cyber bullying, like online text message, social media. It can be physical bullying. It can also, uh, you know, where they beat somebody up, it can be emotional bullying. Verbal. Verbal. What should a student do if they see their friend get a bullied? Well, they need to report that. Um, us adults in the building are, are work with students who are being bullied and um, we've had a lot of practice with it so we're very willing to help out in those situations. What if a friend was getting bullied and they didn't want to tell someone? They still need to encourage, uh, I mean they need to encourage their friend that's being bullied to work through the situation. They can even say something to the bully as well. But it's really important, especially if you fear for the safety of that person that's being bullied, that something be said to an adult so it can be dealt with. You could always write something down anonymously and not put your name on it, but make sure that in the notation who is being bullied and what's going on and then just drop it in a mailbox to one of us and, and we can look at it from there. What is bullying? 
Well, this is one thing that a lot of students and parents and adults get confused about. And according to, I've got the Indiana Code right here. According to Indiana law, bullying is the repeated, and that's the key word, repeated, use by one or more persons of written, verbal, or electronic expression, or a physical act or gesture, or any combination thereof, directed at a target. So basically, the big thing is it has to be repeated. If I'm walking down the hall and I push some kid into the locker and that's the first and only time, that's not bullying, okay? That's not bullying. If I call someone a name that's not nice, that's not bullying unless I'm doing it repeatedly. And that's one thing a lot of students and parents will use the word, he's bullying me or she's bullying me, when really it's not, they're just not being nice. They use that as excuses for not coming to school or not performing well in school uh, when it, it really isn't a bullying situation. So what's the difference between joking and bullying? Joking, sometimes people think they're joking and it may be funny to them, but it's maybe not funny to the other person because you don't know, even if it's your best friend, you may not know the entire story. You don't know everything that person's gone through and you can't assume that just because I think it's funny, that person will too. But usually joking, it's a one-time thing again where bullying is repeated, and joking could turn into bullying. If, if I'm joking around and I say something that gets an, uh, you know, anger out of you, or I can tell that it bothers you and I keep running it in the ground, then that becomes bullying. Why do students bully? Sometimes it's because they feel that they, you know, maybe they feel weak in an area, so they pick on the weakness in someone else that they see, and, uh, gives them a feeling of strength or superiority when really it makes the other person you know, feel bad. I think that's part of it. They like to see the reaction from somebody else. If they, that's pushing their buttons, if they know they're gonna get a reaction, uh, even though it's negative, um, they, they may continue the bullying or joking just to see how they react. And they get a kick out of that, which isn't right, but. <laughs> Can an adult get bullied? Yes. Absolutely. There, and that's one thing, and I know Mrs. Hewitt, you've heard this before, kids say they want to get out of school because they want to leave the drama, but there's drama in the adult world too, and adults can get bullied and adults can be bullies. It's sad, but it's true. What are signs that someone is getting bullied? Anytime there's a change in the behavior of a, of a student or an adult, it means there's something going on in their life. It could be bullying, it could be something else. but. Um, kids that used to have be smiling all the time, be very active, involved in things, and then all of a sudden they're reserved um, and look sad all the time. Something's going on, um, and it could be bullying, but it could be something else too. Something and, we need to watch. And sometimes with the bullying, like if a student's being bullied online through social media or text, whenever the someone comes around and they've got their phone out, they put it away real fast because they don't want someone to see. And that could be a sign that they're bullying someone or that they're being bullied. So that's another thing to watch out for. Why are most students in school scared to contact the adult? I think part of the reason is that they're concerned that that's going to make them look weak or they don't want to be a snitch, they don't want to tell on someone. I think those are probably the two biggest reasons. you agree with that? Yes, I, I, I was going to say they, they don't want to get in trouble, they don't want to be the snitch and tell on somebody else. Um, How can a student resolve their situation on their own without giving? Well, if it's, you mean if a, the student is being bullied, he or she needs to come talk with the counselor or principal or assistant principal, even let a teacher know because there are forms we can fill out, we can get things started. Sometimes the student doesn't want to go any farther with it because concerned about the backlash from the bully. If, uh, but it's, it's serious. Nobody should be made to feel not welcome or not liked at school just because someone else wants to make them uncomfortable. And it's really important to try and get help because school should be good times, not being scared of what people are going to say or do behind your back. And oftentimes we get students together and we kind of mediate what's going on with the situation. And, and oftentimes that's all that needs to happen is they need to tell each other how they're feeling about what's going on because they don't realize that uh, they're hurting someone else. And so oftentimes we can resolve that conflict really quickly. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Enjoyed it.
Okay, Lindsay, you're up. Today I'm going to talk about Patty. Patty's best characteristics, she's stupid, stupid and ugly. Everything she does is ugly. Watch her eat, watch her stuff her face. Look at her, greasy hair, dirty fingernails. It makes me want to vomit. Her dad doesn't work, they have no money. That's why she wears that nasty pink sweater. Everyone hates her, even the teachers, and they're supposed to like everyone. Get a life, Patty. Thank you. So if any of you out there have been bullied or affected by bullying, just know that you can get help. But anyways, let's bring the mood back up. The Washington County Theater is holding auditions for grades 7th through 12th on August 20th and the 21st at 6 p.m. at the Gary W. Hartsook Hall, 402 North Harrison Street. The auditions are for a non-musical play that shows November 16th, the 17th, and the 18th. I, personally, will be auditioning with the King Arthur's famous monologue from the cult classic film, Shrek the Third. Now for the quote of the week for the people in the audience who needs a little inspiration. We may know what we are, but not what we may be. And now let's get some hot dogs of motivation from the local motivational hot dog vendor, DDP. That was a horrible metaphor. Don't care. Let's go. Hey guys, it's me, DDP, and welcome to another motivational. This is just a great time of the year. And, you know, I really want you to start to think about who you want to be. Because you can be anybody you want to be. You really can, or at least a version of that. You know, I once heard Tony Robbins, who's one of my mentors out there, and I only met the guy once, but we are going to be in business together at some point. He doesn't know that yet, but I'm putting that out in the universe because I know at some point, it's going to happen. No, no when, but when it happens, it'll be the perfect time. I once heard him say, I created Tony Robbins. Like, no one knew who Tony Robbins was. He didn't even know in the beginning, but he knew who he thought he might be. And I started thinking, man, I completely created Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> I mean, completely from this fictional wrestling character who was trying like so hard in the beginning to become this bigger than life wrestling persona. But the truth is, when I was trying to be something that I wasn't, I could never really connect with the fans, the people in general, I couldn't connect with them. But the instant that Diamond Dallas Page started to take on the characteristics of my given name, Paige Joseph Falkenberg, man, that's when my career started to take off like a rocket because they were one and the same, just at times DDP was way more amped up, you know? And I started to think, you know, one of my favorite lines when I first started wrestling and uh, actually in managing was there was a reverend who used to say, the quickest way to get there is to act like you've already been there. Like, they don't know. Nobody knows but you. And then I started coming up with this little voice in my head. Fake it till you make it. And as time went on, way less faking, way more making. Like, it just started to come together. When we talk about this a lot, we talk about the power of positive energy. We talk about you become the five people you hang out most with. When you put yourself in those circles of negativity, you are gonna go into negativity. But when you put yourself in a position where you're not gonna let anything pull you down, like no matter what, you are gonna keep striving towards the light, things really start to happen. And again, in the beginning, it might be fake it till you make it. Like, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be with your health? Who do you want to be with your workouts and your activities? Who do you want to be in your professional life? Who do you want to be in your personal life? 
I'm telling you right now, I could die tomorrow. And boom, maybe I'm already dead by the time you're watching this. Oh God, that sounds so, we don't want you to die. Like, hey, neither do I. But don't ever feel sorry for Dallas Page because I have lived at least four lives, at least maybe five. God has blessed me so much. And it's one of the reasons I'm constantly giving back to you because the real quote, and you've heard it to me over and over again, the real quote that I live by was by what I heard Zig Ziglar say many years ago. I believe that I can get whatever I want as long as I help enough people get what they want. Again, in the beginning, I'm just being me. You gotta be you. Becoming true to yourself every day while you're creating this person or this company or this dream that you have. Just keep striving towards the light. Keep throwing it out there. Keep working. And before you know it, it's going to become a reality. Think about it. Bang, that was great. Remember with the enough effort, you can be anyone you want to be. Just stay true to yourself. Now, before we go, here's a new segment. I have a collection of various Lego sets that I organize to recreate various scenes from movies. Now, was that true or is that a lie? Let any of the crew members know what you think the answer is and we'll reveal the truth on the next episode. And with that, this episode concludes. If you enjoyed it, let us know. If you didn't enjoy it, well, help us make it better. We love our school and community. See you guys on the next episode of The Salem Show. Bye.